Tomorrow we will witness the release of the Eurozone's gross domestic product results and the ECB will review its strategy for tackling the Eurozone crisis with the announcement of the rate decision. Today I'm joined by Peter van der Houten, Chief Economist at ING in Brussels, to discuss his predictions for tomorrow's events. Hello Peter, thank you for joining me today. ECB member and Governor of the Bank of Italy, Ignacio Visco, recently said another LTRO remains possible. Do you think the ECB will consider implementing another LTRO or quantitative easing? Over the last few months, uh, capital has been fleeing away from uh, peripheral countries. For example, in, in Spain alone, in the first few months of this year, uh, more than 100 billion euros have left the countries, leaving uh, the, uh, the banking system with a liquidity squeeze, and this might even have, uh, as a consequence, a credit squeeze in some of the peripheral countries. So, in a way, there is definitely scope and a reason for the ECB uh, to implement uh, a new LTRO to help uh, the banking system in the peripheral countries. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's also true that uh, Draghi, Mario Draghi, has said last week that uh, the ECB cannot continue throwing liquidity into, well, I would say, zombie banks, and that also the solvency problem has to be solved and that this is up to European leaders to do this, to decide upon a system to cure the solvency problem in, in, in the European banking system. So, yes, uh, there is a possible potential for a new LTRO, but I think that first uh, the ECB will await what European leaders will decide upon a, a system to help uh, or to, to banks or to recapitalize banks in, 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 the, in the Eurozone. Economists at BNP Paribas, Danske Bank and Credit Agricole anticipate a 25 basis point rate cut. Do you expect any changes in the main rates? Uh, probably not at, at uh, tomorrow's meeting. Uh, one, one can say that, that things have uh, deteriorated in terms of uh, the economic outlook and I expect the ECB to downgrade uh, its forecast for GDP and possibly also for inflation. So. Growth is faring worse as expected, that's true, also with uh, commodity prices now coming down, uh, especially oil prices, uh, inflation might also turn out lower than uh, expected earlier. Now, uh, having said that, this, this, this could allow the ECB to decide upon a rate cut, but again, the ECB uh, it thinks it has already done enough to help uh, the European economy, and it now wants to see more action from uh, political leaders first. But uh, once this is decided, I can imagine that uh, there is there is scope for a rate cut. So yes, I would expect a rate cut, but potentially uh, at uh, next month's meeting in July and not already tomorrow. The ECB has already injected 1 trillion euros into the banking system, but Draghi said the ECB cannot continue to bail out the national banks. Do you think the ECB will be able to rescue the euro, and what else do you expect from Wednesday's meeting? For sure, without ECB liquidity, the banking systems in peripheral countries would already be done, and uh, there will be more pressure on them uh, to, leave, to leave the eurozone. So, uh, for sure, the ECB has already done a lot, uh, but uh, the thing is that the ECB cannot do everything. And, and uh, um, true, Draghi uh, said that uh, ECB can 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 give liquidity aid to uh, the banking system overall, but at the end of the day, cannot uh, uh, cure the solvency problem. Uh, same thing for. Uh, I would say for, for countries uh, in trouble, countries with huge budget deficits, the ECB can intervene to prop up temporarily the uh, bond markets of those countries. But at the end of the day, it cannot uh, uh, diminish uh, the budget deficits of the countries in question. So on these different uh, problems, uh, be it uh, government debt and deficit on the one hand, be it uh, bank solvency on the other hand, it's up to uh, political leaders to come up with a solution here. And so, in a way, I think that uh, the, the ECB has, is now pretty much bargaining or uh, arm wrestling, uh, if you like, 
uh, with uh, political leaders that they come up with a kind of master plan where they lay out how they will try to uh, uh, preserve the stability of the monetary union of the next few years. And that would be very important for the summit of the end of June. And once this is uh, explicited, uh, the ECB is definitely ready to do its part of the job with even more liquidity. So I can imagine that after June's summit, if uh, the, the European leaders explicit uh, some more concrete action uh, to keep together uh, the Eurozone, that this will be uh, topped up by the ECB with, uh, with a, a, an even looser monetary policy. And finally, the Eurozone's gross domestic product will also be released tomorrow. What is your prediction for tomorrow's GDP results? There will be some additional information in it, but essentially I don't expect much change. I think that the figure will be maintained at 0% growth for the first quarter. What pr probably will be striking in tomorrow's figures once again is the huge diversion between, on the one hand, the core countries and, on the other hand, the periphery with, uh, let's say, muted growth in the core countries, but a very severe recession uh, in, in the periphery. So it will be... Uh, once again, a restoration of the internal divergence within the Eurozone. And now uh, attention will be pretty much focused on how growth will develop further uh, in, in the rest of, of, of the year. And, and there things don't seem to, to look uh, very good, given the fact that uh, looking at confidence indicators also in Germany and in the other core, core countries, they have been deteriorating since March, April uh, of this year and so we might look after a stagnation in the first quarter uh, against uh, 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 a recession again uh, in the second quarter so the recession will be back in town in the eurozone and, and this uh, will be w one additional reasons for uh, both eurozone leaders and the ecb to maintain uh, a, a very uh, loose policy thank you peter Yesterday, Greg Anderson from Citibank told my colleague Rowena Harris-Dowdy there was a 50% chance of a 25 basis point cut. Today, RBA announced a 25 basis point cut to 3.50%. That is all for now. Tomorrow, I'll be back to look at the results of the ECB meeting. Goodbye.